Hello, I'm Katrina and welcome back to my allotment garden. I've just been uh, picking some of my strawberries because there's so many over there. This is just from one of the cages, so I've got loads more to pick, so it's going to be a great summer for strawberries. It's been really lovely and warm today. The warm temperatures are back after a, a bit of a cooler month compared to May. And in the middle of the month, we had lots of really stormy weather for about one or two weeks. It was really muggy and then we'd get a downpour of rain and thunder and lightning. It was all very dramatic, but we really did need the rain. And now everything is growing so rapidly. It's looking so, so lush. Uh, so the weather's now picking back up again and it looks like we're going to have a little heat wave as we go into July. It's looking like it's going to be about 28 or 29 degrees tomorrow so that's uh, pretty pretty hot i'm actually feeling really good at the moment about the allotment i've had a really busy productive month giving that one last push before summer months and i'm so pleased that the lower end of my garden where i've been transforming it over the last few months is pretty much complete now i've built the trellis uh, I've given it a good little tidy up and I can't wait to show you guys. Um, yeah, that's looking really good. I've planted out lots of pots with all my flowers. The dahlias are in. The polytunnel is all planted with my tomatoes. Almost all the crops are now planted out into the ground and it's, um, it's really coming on. So I think I'm just going to have a couple more strawberries <laughs> and then we'll go on a tour. Hmm. So good. Now, because there's quite a bit to see today, I'm just going to go over what's new and blooming because you don't need to see everything this month. But look at that hosta, it's huge down by the pond. I've got blueberries on the way. I would normally have this covered by the way, but I've just removed it for, for you guys so you get to see. And next to my blueberry bushes, I've actually moved my little toadstool table up here so that I can enjoy some of my potted plants at a higher level rather than being on the ground. Now this is my mulberry that I bought this year. And I don't know if you can see, it does have fruits on. But they don't look particularly big right now. And in fact the plant, it did suffer a little bit. And I don't know if you can see, but the, um, the stems on some of them are quite bare up top. So maybe it was that frost that we had quite late that's um, killed off some of the foliage. But we've got some fruits coming. And next to that I've got lots of pelagoniums. Some are scented, some are new. This is one that I bought last year that's really bulked up now love that sort of silvery green colour and this will have a really dark purple flower so yeah it's quite nice having them sort of raised off the ground so I can see them much better and moving across to my old plum tree I've got lots of achillea there in bloom and further up next to the bird feeders I've made a hanging basket but I'm not sure what I think to it at the moment. Uh, I just kind of threw some plants in, but... And down here, I've planted out my leeks. And I've done this using the multi-sow method. So there's three or four leeks per clump. And yeah, they're growing away down here. They're not very thick at the moment, but they should still bulk up and I tend to eat them over winter. My gooseberries are just beginning to ripen now. Can you see that slight blush colour? Um, that's the colour they will turn. There we go. Mine actually turn like a pinkish colour. This variety. Oh, that one's that one's about ripe. They're going to be so sour though. I know it. <laughs> I don't really eat gooseberries. But this entire section that I've covered is for me rather than the birds. So I'll let those ripen before I pick them all. As for the strawberry beds, well, there are so many fruits in here and a bit more bindweed, you know, always finds a way. Yeah, so many strawberries. I just need to go around and pick them all, make some jam or some rhubarb and strawberry crumble. Have you ever had that? Or it's like a crisp if you're in America. 
it's so good with rhubarb just substitute some of the rhubarb for strawberries as you would a normal crumble and oh look at that ridge you're on underneath my fig tree that's really bulked out now in fact i've removed a couple of plants there were i think six in here and i've now just condensed it down to four and i've used the other two elsewhere that's in my galvanized water tank that i got let's go look at the fruit well it seems to have recovered from the frost the foliage is growing well i gave it a feed the other week i should try and remember to do that at least fortnightly and yeah i mean i'm not quite sure when you know they're ready for picking and behind the fig i planted out my sweet corn the other month that's growing quite well now bulking out a couple of cosmos in between and also a squash down there oh i can see a really big fat strawberry but yeah thankfully no mice this year last year i didn't harvest hardly any at all i was absolutely gutted because i i don't really eat strawberries any other time of the year i don't like to oh my god look at the size of that slug oh my god you're big stay away from my strawberries what i was about to say before i almost touched that slug is that i don't really eat strawberries at any other time of the year particularly often i certainly don't really go out into the shops and buy strawberries in the middle of winter and i think that's what makes it even more special when you grow your own and you harvest the first lot and you just taste that intense sweetness and the flavor yeah sure homegrown always tastes better than shop bought but when you're eating seasonally it just you know your tongue and your palate is just so hungry for it and i think that makes it even more special when you do grow your own um, sort of new addition to the plot i've got a banana plant that doesn't grow edible bananas it's more of a foliage plant like a tropical um, which doesn't really suit the theme of my plot but i just love the lush leaves i love that sort of tropical house plant look uh, so we're gonna see how that grows in a pot for the meantime got lots of organic matter in there because they're very hungry plants uh, but i can always move it i can always put it in the ground and then obviously i need to protect it over the winter similarly in a big leaf fashion my rhubarb i'm going to pick a couple of stems so that i can have a rhubarb and strawberry crumble but otherwise this will be dying down soon i shouldn't really pick too much more as we go into july but still got some good good stems on there after all that rain now as for my apples they're growing well and usually in june we have the june drop where the fruit tree will drop a load of the fruits so that it's um, not taking up too much of the energy and it can focus on fewer fruits but i don't feel like i've got as many fruits as i was expecting or have had in previous years and i've got a feeling that because of the late frost and a combination of the wind and the drought i don't think it's going to be a particularly heavy cropping year for my apples this year but we'll have to wait and see lots of that rose campion and i bought a hosta i've got a random <laughs> i didn't put my pots away i've also planted out a couple of cosmos and that's how it's looking from this side but let's go around the other way before we go to the wildlife corner i just want to show you a little project that i've come up with um this was it used to be a chimney like a little log burner um, that was given to me by one of my closest friends quite a few years ago I'm talking three or four years ago but i knocked it a couple of months ago and it smashed you know this would have had a nice domed well that would have been the bottom it's actually upside down right now and so what i've done is recycled it and just turned it into a planter so i've put some nasturtiums in there we've got a pelagonium and we've also got some dwarf sunflowers so we'll just see how they grow in there but i'm just pleased to have repurposed it you know i didn't want to throw it out and it's actually making good use of this space because the position it's in underneath is a bit of a slab of concrete or something that's really difficult to get out of the ground 
So by planting it up above the ground, I've now got something in that space. My shed is looking particularly cute at the moment. with <laughs> lots of pots outside it. I do love that foliage. So yeah, I've had a lot of fun playing with planters over the last few weeks. I've put a dahlia in this one. That's my yellow dahlia, so I thought it would match those flowers and marigolds and pop nicely against my dark shed. And so this is how my wildlife corner is looking this month. If I just mind those apples. <laughs> Lots more colours coming out now. We've got the pinks and those purpley blues of the hardy geranium on the ground there. That white campanula is looking beautiful. More lupins still at the back. Uh, delphinium and some more of those hardy geraniums. You always know it's been a hot day when the bird feeder runs dry. I think I'll be filling that up every day this week looking at the forecast. We've had so many lupins this year, it's been great. It is really hard to capture the true colour of this delphinium. It's like a purpley blue, but it just doesn't come out so well on camera. But I'll be cutting this right down to the ground after it's flowered so that we get a second flush in late summer. The bees are really loving this geranium. Maybe I do have more apples than I originally thought, but I still don't think it's going to be such a heavy harvest compared to previous years. I have bought a few new herbs this month, including some orange mint, some lime mint, which I've not heard of before. These are going to be great for cocktails or some pims and lemonade in the summer. I've also got a chamomile there. And this, which is a Vietnamese coriander, and I partially bought it just for that foliage. I mean, it's such a beautiful plant. And that brings me on to the lower end of my allotment, where it's all looking quite tidy and new. Let's go have a close look over here. So right at the bottom of my allotment is a spot that I've been trying to work on for the last few months. few months and particularly this big fencing panel behind me is my trellis that I finally built and finished over the last couple of days and it's providing support for a clematis that was already planted before I got my allotment and there's also a honeysuckle next to it as well which is now climbing up and this is going to create a bit of a green screen because behind it is going to be my working area for the allotment. I've got my compost bin, um, lots of pots, my wheelbarrows, um, you know, all the unsightly stuff that you don't really want to be looking at in a garden is hopefully going to be fenced off by the time all the plants grow and cover this trellis. So I've also planted a climbing rose in the bottom left corner and that is Generous Gardener, which is the same as what I have at the top of my allotment in front of the gate. We've also got my galvanised tank here with a few more tropicals which I'll show you in just a moment but now that that's complete and you know the honeysuckle is going to smell really sweet and fill the air with that gorgeous fragrance over summer and I'm hoping that as the lockdown eases perhaps I can have some friends around here and we can have a barbecue in the summer and just really start enjoying the allotment more relaxing and unwinding rather than doing all of these jobs that I've been working quite hard on as well over the last six years but in particular the last few months. So yeah if you're new to my channel my plot never looked like this to begin with it was about shoulder height in weeds the whole way across so it's taken a long time to get here but I feel like my plot is 95% done now. I mean sure there are still areas I need to tackle like behind the shed and the top of the mound behind the polytunnel. Um, I need to work on some storage solutions but you know I feel like I'm finally there and yeah it feels it feels pretty good. So if you've just taken an allotment don't give up 
Um, it does take a bit of hard graph, but you'll get there. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to really enjoying it and um, relaxing over the next couple of months down here in my seating area. My clematis was already starting to climb it before I actually secured it into the ground. Um, but look at that colour, it's absolutely beautiful. Really stands out against the green foliage. And it's actually got so many flower buds on it. <laughs> More than it ever has before because it's finally got the support that it needs. And then the honeysuckle is just down here. And then I've got some ferns there in the corner. And yeah, I'm probably going to end up extending that shady corner and planting up in front of the um, fencing. Those stones are just there to kind of hide that metal bar from a distance. You can't really see it. Um, and I, obviously I use those stones all over my plot so it's a nice way of sort of tying it all together and keeping that consistency. But yeah, I'm so pleased <laughs> it's done. Um, I'm contemplating maybe I shouldn't have painted them the same colour as everything else and maybe gone for a greener colour. But yeah, this is like the messy corner and hopefully it'll be much more hidden from view. The compost bin, wheelbarrows, I've got some bags of, com bags of compost in there. And then we've got my salad bed and oh my god, how much salad have I got? <laughs> So here is how my salad bed is now looking exactly one month after planting it and we've got so many lush leaves here it's such a jungle but I need to harvest some because you know there's so much here to pick and I'm going to share it with my neighbours and some of my friends as well they'll welcome some salad leaves in this hot weather um, and I'm growing three different types of lettuce here at the front we've got red solix and ruffled sole those are the two dark varieties and the green one with the red splashes is um, flashy butter oak and they're all a type of lettuce that's known as cut and come again and um, basically if you're not familiar what that means is rather than harvesting the entire head of lettuce which you can do another way of doing it is actually just harvesting the outside leaves and then you wait a week and then you've probably got another layer of leaves on the outside to pick so you actually get quite a lot of harvest from one plant and you can be cropping it for about six weeks before it wants to go to seed so I've got quite a lot here. I've also got the beetroot, they're growing really well. I've got some chard and some spinach at the back. I've only got a couple of um, beans that actually germinated so I did put some more seeds in there as a last resort um, just to see if they do come up. Um, but yeah I'm going to go and um, pick some of this lettuce and um, fill my truck because there's quite a lot here. <laughs> Well, I think that should just about do it. <laughs> I'm actually brewing up some comfrey feed, a natural fertiliser made from comfrey plants. <laughs> I'm going to put that lid back on because it absolutely stinks. Essentially all you do is rip off the comfrey leaves and uh, ferment them, soak them in a bucket of water for about four weeks. And that's all you really need to do. I've weighed mine down with a brick. You can see it's about a third full there. And that's almost ready for using now and boy does it stink outside my shed i've changed the planting on this bed we've got lots more dwarf sunflowers some cosmos calendula marigolds and nasturtiums as well on my bench i've actually also recycled another part of the chimney and made a little succulent alpine planter with lots of sedums and sempervivum and hopefully these will start to trail down the front soon. Uh, so here's the allotment from the bottom end. Those nasturtiums are getting so big. And my carrots. Carrots have absolutely loved all the wet weather we had. In fact, let's, let's pull one out. I did thin them out. Let's see how big this one is. Ooh, that's not bad. 
Now, unfortunately, my courgette plants have not done a great deal. I thought these would be flowering by now, but the plants are still pretty small. And although they have been since shaded out a little bit by the potato plants that are enormous, <laughs> um, I had this same problem last year and I should have used some different seeds. I have actually sown some more. Look, they're just still quite far behind. Maybe I'll buy a couple of plants. Here's my squash mountain. All the squash plants have grown really well in the last few weeks. Potato there that I need to grab out. But look, that one's starting to really scramble now. The potato plants are doing really well especially now I've had some rain and they're so tall I mean they are in buckets remember but this one here comes up to my chest <laughs> so I only hope that we've got some really good sized potatoes in those pots I'll be harvesting them after these flowers have gone over my second earlies at least my charlottes will be the first to harvest I've got lots of sweet peas on the way, sweet pea flowers. Mine are a bit later than everybody else's because I had a bit of a, a problem with a mouse who ate all of my seeds. Um, but yeah, that's now looking really good. Now, unfortunately, in this patch here, it is quite bare now at the moment. I harvested all the garlic from this row because it was showing some pretty bad signs of rust. And the cloves were quite small, but they're still edible. I replaced the garlic with some parsnip seedlings, which are coming through now. They're a little bit far behind, but I should still hopefully get some parsnips for winter. The shallots down here are almost ready for harvesting now. The leaves are just flopping over. Wow, some really loud birds this evening. <laughs> And in the border along the side of my plot, I have some dahlias that actually survived the winter months that I left in here. So they're growing away. And I've also planted out some cosmos, some phlox and some white straw flowers as well. If we go up to this border here, we've got my beans. They're growing really well now. And well, my Lord Lester peas. <laughs> I have just removed the um, covering. I have had these netted so that the birds don't get them. But look how much they've grown in the last month. No signs of any flowers on these just yet. But we do on my other peas. The Rosa Corona are also growing pretty well. These are at about, I'd say, sort of thigh height. I sowed these a lot later than the others. Oh yeah, I've also planted out a couple of squash. Really love the color of the flowers on my spring blush peas. I've actually had to put in a bit of string because the twig support was not tall enough. They're growing almost taller than me. And over at the dahlia beds, well, the dahlias are finally in. And I've also put some supporting hoops around them, but not all of them because I haven't bought enough of them yet. But yep, so they're all out and we've even got a few buds coming on the way. I think this one has got buds yet. So hopefully I've got the varieties in the right places this year. We've got my Wizard of Oz at the back because I know that one grows quite tall. And we've also obviously extended the bed. We've got a double bed this year. We've got some more dahlias in there. This one at the front is a natal, which was actually in the long border. So it's not far as far as advanced as the others because those were raised up in the greenhouse or polytunnel, should I say, from ones that I overwintered. So this one has come from the ground last year. I've also put a few little pelagoniums just to brighten it up. But in front here, I've actually still got some more dahlias to plant out. 
and these are the single flower varieties for my wildlife corner and I actually thought about putting them in some large terracotta pots because I don't want them to get lost amongst all the other plants that I've got in there um, so I might be able to raise them up and move them around but I've been to a few nurseries and garden centres and everywhere seems to be sold out of terracotta pots at the moment so I haven't quite decided what to do yet that one's been eaten by a slug or a snail always check the bottom nope not there so um, I'm going to decide what to do with these in the next week or so because they really do need to go out and if we take a look in the polytunnel well we've got lots of tomatoes growing lots of chilies growing and we've even made a hanging basket this year with tomatoes and nasturtiums in um, yeah where do we start let's go over here <laughs> so this is the galena variety the potato leaf one got lots of flowers on it and thanks to the commenter in last month's video who suggested leaving one or two suckers on the sides because it's quite a narrow plant so i've left one sucker there thank you very much um, so hopefully i get more flowers and more fruits if you're wondering what's down here i've just got quite a few little cuttings and i've got some more courgettes because the others aren't doing so well i mean i know they're going to be so far behind but you know they might fill a few gaps after i've harvested things like the potatoes and i might still um, get some harvested in before autumn i have got far too many chili plants in here <laughs> uh, they are all in pots I do have a few fruits already. Can you see there? I've got some Hungarian hot wax that I need to harvest so that they can carry on flowering and fruiting. We'll go through these properly um, when, I've, when I can move around here a bit better. But yeah, lots of flowers coming through. They're all growing really well. And here we are at the top of the plot on the 23rd of June 2020 it's all coming together so as you can see I've had a pretty busy June getting all of these projects and big jobs finished but they're all done now so I can relax and put my feet up enjoy the fruits of my labor and as we go into July hopefully we'll have lots of um, harvest the peas and the potatoes might even have a few dahlias as well I'd love to hear from you how you're doing I hope you're well how is everything growing in your patch of earth I know that there's a lot of craziness going on in the world right now um, but I just really want to thank you for supporting my channel because I think I hit 30,000 subscribers not long ago and also 60,000 on Instagram which is just mind-blowing to know that all of you are following my allotment journey and that you like my videos um, me just pottering around the allotment each month <laughs> um, it's really really encouraging and I think you're possibly the biggest motivator to get all my things done each month because I want to show you new things and it's a delight to show you hey Alex sorry about that my uh, plot neighbor was just saying goodbye um, so yeah I'm what was I saying I'm just really really grateful for you guys so thank you for all your encouragement and all your support which brings me to the end of this video except I just want to quickly recommend you something because I like to do that each month um, if you go onto the website blightwatch.co.uk this might only apply to the UK so I'm sorry guys if you're international um, but you can put in your postcode and it will email you whenever there is a high risk of blight in your area which means you are um, you know you can keep an eye on your tomatoes and your potatoes and perhaps monitor your watering schedule um, I just find it really useful to know when we're at a high risk because it means I probably won't water the polytunnel that day because I don't want the excess moisture in the air to increase the risk of blight um, so yeah it's good to have these email notifications and we did have one each day for a solid week the other week the other week so um, yeah it did put me on my toes a little bit but it is good to be aware and then you can look out for any visible signs of early blight or late blight as we go into summer you know you might be able to avoid a real bad um, problem so yeah that brings me to the end of this video um, thank you so much 
honestly for all your support and your comments i love to hear from you each month where you are in the world what's growing well i really hope you're doing okay amongst all the chaos that's going on in the world um, so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time